All right, guys, so I've had a couple questions about flow jet pumps. So let's dive into what a flow jet pump is, how it operates, how to install it, the uh, parameters within installing a flow jet pump, and then let's look at some troubleshooting things that we can look at if you're having a couple issues. So I got a G57 flow jet pump in my hands here. Let's talk about seal materials. You can get this in a Santaprene, Viton, or Calrez. Santaprene is going to get you by on most of your car wash chemicals. Uh, you're going to want to step up to Viton seals if you're using pre-soaks, tire cleaners, stuff of that nature. And then you're going to want to step up to the Calrez seals uh, if you're going to push something that's very acidic. Um, those Calrez seals can hold up to that acid for a much longer and extended period of time. Let's go over some facts and the operation of the pump. The pump itself is a 5 GPM pump. Uh, it is a double diaphragm pump. And what I mean by that is there's a diaphragm on each end of this pump. As the pump is actually working, each diaphragm is in the opposite state. So as one diaphragm is pushing fluid out, the other diaphragm is sucking fluid in and vice versa. So as it clicks, those diaphragms are actually moving back and forth, sucking in and discharging liquid. Along with the fact that this is a double diaphragm pump, it's also a self-priming pump. What that means is we don't have to bleed this pump out at all. As soon as we have our suction line connected and that dip tube into our fluid that we want to move, uh, this pump will self-prime that liquid up into itself up to 15 feet. This pump operates between 20 and 100 PSI. We don't want to operate at anything below 20, and we don't want to operate at anything above 100 PSI. Along with that is the fact that this is a deadheading pump. The pump itself is designed to deadhead. Now, most pumps are not designed for that, but let's go over what deadheading is and what that operation looks like. So when we apply pressure to the pump, and let's say that we're going to use 20 PSI, it the pump itself is going to generate 20 PSI on the discharge side and say we're going to a closed solenoid. As soon as we reach that 20 PSI, the pump itself is going to stop running. You're going to stop hearing that clicking sound. As soon as that solenoid opens up and our pressure on the discharge side drops below 20 PSI, the pump is instantly going to start to run again to maintain that output of 20 PSI, whether that's to a bay or you're feeding that liquid to something else. The pump is designed to do that. That's how it runs. That's so we don't have to turn the air on and off to the pump itself. The air is always applied to the pump and we are going to control the pump running or not running based on the output pressure. All right, guys, let's hit some key installation points. Uh, first thing we want to talk about is mounting the pump. The pump itself needs to be mounted with the ports facing down, not on its side and definitely not upside down. With the ports facing down, that self-priming action is much easier. To go along with that self-priming action, we don't want to mount this pump anything above four feet away from the fluid level. Uh, you can be 15 feet in either direction, but a maximum of four foot above that fluid level to keep this pump running the way that it's supposed to be running. Let's talk about check valves quick. Any check valve within the system that this flow jet is operating on must have a cracking pressure at 2 PSI or below. Anything outside that tolerance is going to change the operation of the pump itself and is going to throw it askew. Last thing I want to talk about is air. This pump needs a minimum of 20 PSI and can use a maximum of 100 PSI to drive. The biggest thing that we need to remember is that air needs to be clean and dry. So from your compressor, you're going to get moisture and a little bit of oil carryover. The best way to get rid of that is an inline air dryer. I would recommend an REP13FA, and that is a regulator air dryer combo. It's going to be the best way to get control of that air and get all of that moisture and oil out of it so that we're not contaminating this pump. 
All right, guys, let's go over a quick SOP on how to change one of these bad boys out. The first thing I'm going to do is remove that air line. Don't worry about shutting your air off. The air fitting itself has a check valve in it that's going to stop that flow of air. Second, we're going to get that dish, the suction line out and then the discharge. Um, at this point, we're going to remove that pump, whether it's from an air logics panel, a pump stand you built yourself, or maybe a FlowJet quick release bracket. Get the old pump out, let's get the new pump in. Once that pump's installed, I'm gonna do it in reverse. I'm gonna get that suction line. I'm gonna get that suction line in. Then I'm gonna get that discharge line in. And at this point, I'm gonna walk out and I'm gonna get a base started up on that low pressure function. That way I have a solenoid open. So when I apply this air, this pump can prime itself as much as it needs to. By the time you get out to the bay and shut that function off, the pump should be primed and your line should be full. Last but not least, my favorite part, troubleshooting. So let's dive into it. When it comes to a flow jet, there's really only three things to consider and that's air supply, suction, and discharge. When it comes to the air line, we're looking for 20 PSI minimum supply of clean, dry air. As long as we're supplying those two things, the air side of this pump should be good. The when it comes to the suction side, the biggest thing that we hear people run into or that I've run into is dirty or bad foot valves. As long as that foot valve is clean and is working properly, this pump will easily draw that fluid up into it. Let's dive into the suction side. When it comes to the suction side, the biggest thing that people run into or want to talk about is vapor lock. Vapor lock is when air gets trapped in the discharge side of the pump and interrupts the flow of fluid. So how do we deal with that? The way I like to deal with it is I will first remove the air side, then I will remove the discharge side. And at this point, you're going to hear a pop or a loud hissing sound and that is that vapor lock letting go. Then I'm going to reinstall that discharge side. I'm going to get a bay running on this low pressure function and then I'm going to install the air side. The pump should immediately start to drive, sucking the fluid up into the suction side and then out through the discharge side out into the bay. By the time you get out to the bay and get that turned off, everything should be primed up and ready to go for the next customer. All right, guys, that's what I got for you on flow jets. If you have any questions, concerns, or just want to talk to somebody about flow jet pumps, give us a call here at CleanRight and we'll get you fixed up. Clean right.